In our next lesson on DNA replication and repair from Chapter 20, we want to look at the enzyme DNA polymerase. The structure of DNA polymerase is very interesting. It's illustrated in this ribbon diagram in this figure from your book. It's shaped very much like a hand. The fingers here in yellow, the thumb in red, and the palm of the hand in green. It's the palm that is the cleft where DNA binds, and this is the active site. We'll see the function of the fingers and the thumb a little bit later. The active site also contains magnesium ions. They're coordinated by aspartate residues, and those are highlighted by the red boxes here. So, of course, those aspartate residues would have permanent negative charges, readily coordinate with those magnesium ions, and keep them within the active site. We often find enzymes that interact with DNA that contain magnesium ions in their active site. It helps to stabilize the negative charges, and that's what's illustrated here. It helps to neutralize the negative charges on that phosphodiester backbone. One of those magnesium ions serves another function, and that is to interact with the three prime oxygen of the most recently added nucleotide. This makes it more nucleophilic, so it's more likely to attack the phosphorus atom of that incoming nucleotide. An interesting factor of DNA polymerase is that there's a hydrophobic pocket where that 2 prime deoxy lies. In other words, the fact that there's no oxygen makes it fit perfectly within that hydrophobic pocket. If we tried to incorporate ribonucleotides, it wouldn't work. There would be a 2 prime oxygen atom, and that would not fit within that hydrophobic pocket. So this is how DNA polymerase ensures that it's adding deoxynucleotides rather than ribonucleotides. DNA polymerases are precessive. In most cases, an enzyme is going to bind its substrate, carry out one catalytic cycle, and then release the product. But in the case of polymerase enzymes, we want them to run through multiple catalytic cycles before it lets go. This is the purpose of the sliding clamp that we saw in our last lesson. It helps to hold the DNA polymerase in place so that it continue, can continue to go through multiple catalytic cycles until it gets to the end of that template. There are actually multiple types of DNA polymerase. E. coli has five. Eukaryotic cells have 12 different types of DNA polymerases. They perform different roles. There's a main uh, DNA polymerase that functions in replication. Some are responsible for synthesizing the leading, others the lagging strands, and as we'll see, there are other DNA polymerases that function in the processes of DNA repair. So how do, does DNA polymerase make sure that it's incorporating the right nucleotide? This is where the fingers and the thumb come into play. So in our illustration here, our ribbon diagram, in purple we have the open form of DNA polymerase. As it binds the DNA template, and that's in purple, and as the nucleotide comes in, the fingers and the, and the thumb closed together, and that's illustrated in green. That's the closed form. You can see there's a loop that closes down over it. If the nucleotide is the proper fit, and this would only be true if the complementary base pairing is appropriate, then it ensures that that's the right nucleotide, and it goes on to add the next nucleotide. If the nucleotide is not a proper fit, instead it's going to clip out the one it just added. We refer to this as 3' prime to 5' prime exonuclease activity. Exo, from the outside, it's, it's clipping off the nucleotide it just added because it's not a proper fit. This limits the error rate to 1 in a million. Another thing that limits the error rate and helps us to maintain DNA fidelity are DNA repair mechanisms that we'll examine in a later lesson. In our next video lesson, we want to see how we remove those RNA primers and then how we join those pieces together to form an intact strand.